Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Business Book and Elon Musk versus Airbnb, the employer versus the employee, working from home or working from the office. It's a debate that's been sparking up left and right. You seem to hear about one company now demanding all employees come back to work to promote company culture, to make sure that their employees aren't just slacking off. But is there more to that? Today, we're going to be talking about that on this week's episode of Business Bookend. I'm Jalen, a systems integration specialist and the author of the Business and Balance blog. With me, as always, is real estate agent extraordinaire Nick Gumpert, who is a realtor in the Southern Cali markets. And today we are talking about the very interesting, but also in battling, apparently, who thought this was going to be happening a few years ago, debate of should employees work from home or should they be working from the office? We're going to be talking about the benefits, the detractors of both sides, but also we're going to give you our opinions on whether or not one side is just full of it and the other one is full of shit. So join us today on this week's episode of Business Bookend. Welcome to Beyond Real Estate with Jay Luck, the podcast discussing parenting, real estate, and business. Every week we go in depth on how to become successful in business and life. Jalen, take it away. All right, everyone. So the debate, Elon Musk, a man that has literal billions to his name, thinks that people should be coming back to work in the office and openly willing to fire any of them who decides not to. Which is very interesting in the tech industry because there's a lot of jobs out there. But on the other side of that debate, Airbnb is requiring no employees to come to the office if they choose not to. So this now comes down to each individual business tactic and strategy, whether or not there's a culture we keep hearing about that every company seems to have and needs to grow it. You can't grow it digitally. I guess the digital space is just impossible to grow a culture in. I think every uh, content creator would very much so disagree with that, but I digress. So today let's look at that. Nick, what are some other companies, if you've heard of them, that have joined this debate of everyone's coming to the office or you know what we're going to give that freedom to people and let them make that decision of whether or not they need the office or not i can't say i followed them closely but i living in california i know apple and disney both have come in to talk about i think it's extended work from home periods i believe for various employees but yeah. they haven't come out to say across the board hey this is the way forward forever so I, I just know that they've come into this space as well. Where my head goes to first is when it comes to Elon Musk in the car making business, it's what is your line of work? Because I yeah. think it sounds nice to work from home, but if you literally have to go somewhere to work on something, I think it makes sense. And then with that being said, there again, he's in a position to make decisions. Other people are in position to make suggestions. So yep. if you don't like the decision being made, you of course have the great, what are we going through right now? The great resignation yeah. space. So you can resign, of course, and go find that remote work job, or you can yep. put up and shut up and say, I need <laughs> to play by the rules of my boss. I, yeah. I might not agree with it, but I'm not in the position to debate. And it is what it is. But I guess that's also one of the points that has been coming from that side of work from homers, where I am a part of the company. Hell, I make the company work on a day-to-day -day basis. Like the CEO, the CEOs change all the time. So at the end of the day, it's like your job actually isn't as important as mine. The Subway CEO, his job title and job, what is that? Job, whatever the description, there we go. doesn't include making sandwiches on a daily basis. So who is he to say, Subway's a bad example because you do have to show up to make sandwiches. <laughs> but at the end of the day, let's say like a tech company, maybe Airbnb or even the more tech side of Tesla, their autopilot, AI features, all the cool little apps to make your car dance. Do those people need to come into the office? Or I think here's the benefit to say, yes, they do. Because when I have a question for you, Jalen, and I'm designing this, what happens when you're working from home? You have a couple of kids. I can't get a hold of you, but I need an answer right now. I think that's inevitably a challenge that gets presented real quick when you are yeah. working on a, in that tech industry and I'm reliant on someone else and both of us are not in the office. 
versus I can just go to your desk or pick up pick up my phone because I know you're at the office to pick up your phone. <laughs> I, I think that's the inevitable yeah. challenge of working from home is you have mo potentially more moving pieces that can keep yeah. you from being available within working hours, right? Yeah, I guess I, I understand that. I understand that there are distractions that come up. That's why I do personally choose to go to the office every day that I can. It, life is easier that way and I can get more work done. For the people that don't have kids or the commute would be too far or they do have a home office, mm -hmm. is it really fair for what Elon Musk said of every employee needs to show up and if they don't, they'll be fired. No is that one, I think get rid of fair because I think it's virtually impossible to have all sides heard to say that's fair because you're always going to have the outlier or outliers that disagree. Yeah. And again, who's, I think more importantly, who's in position to define what, not what fair is, but what's yeah. going to move, what's the way forward. And I think that's well, really the reality of it. Yeah, and it's interesting that you fair is. It's interesting that you say that though, because I think traditionally it has been who has the power in this. And it has been the power is from the employer. But I think with the great resignation or whatever the quiet quitting, whatever, man, those types of things and those movements are showing that it's actually the employee has a lot more power than was previously given to them. And so when we say, well, is that fair? They don't get to choose. It's well, kind of showing on, the opposite. On, because if you tune okay. in for our Wednesday episode of 1099 workers, I think therein lies the option. Should you be a 1099 yeah. worker? Because then you can't technically be told when to show up, what to wear, right? You're going to have your way of doing you. That's going to also get rid of some of those benefits that an employee gets the benefit of whether it be healthcare coverage, whether it be dentist and I, and just go down the list, how in depth certain companies choose to take care of their employees versus 1099 workers. Yeah, you can show up when you want. You can do your job yeah. when you want, but you're also not gonna have that cushion to fall back on, on my dime. And I think that's the reality of our makeup right now in our business world is if you want the luxury of being an employee, you're gonna play by certain rules and I get to dictate those rules because again, I'm giving you something in return in addition to the work that you provide for me. Yeah, and, and now let's take us down the different route that other people do point to that though. They say, hey, I can do my job. If I get the job done in six hours or eight hours a day and you're happy with it, and I'm doing the job that you and I agreed you would pay me for, whether I work from home or at the office, what's the problem? I think, I don't know that there's a problem as much as it is a preference. And if that employee wants that preference, I think, are you willing to take yourself out of that position of getting the benefits and having yeah. that luxury of lifestyle to say, I want to move into my own space. And I think for the vast majority of people, they say no to that, no to that question. Like, eh, yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> Cause then they go do a little bit yeah. of their own research for healthcare costs. It's like, I can't afford that. <laughs> and they look at what the dental is without insurance. Like I can't pay for that. Yeah. And I think that's again, the reality that is in place. I, I guess I, I keep coming back to is that, uh, I, I guess I would you, say is, is okay. Do you yeah, let, let me ask you this question. If I've got my remote work job, Gee, okay. when I'm working for you, you're in Denver, Colorado, and I choose to live in North Dakota. And mm -hmm. because I'm extreme introvert, don't need to leave, don't care about the cold because <laughs> I'm always in my house. And <laughs> should I be paid Colorado wages or no North Dakota wages based on me Ooh. working for your company in Colorado? Great question. And I would say if you are looking for that, it should be your local cost of living. But I'm working for you in Colorado, helping Very you make true. Colorado profits. Yep. Yep. But you don't want to, it's, it is offset though. However, because the only reason why I am looking for a helper for the cost that I'm willing to spend is because that's what economics dictates that I can afford to pay someone this much money to then create this much revenue. And even if I am say cutting it like, ah, oh, my workforce here in Colorado costs 10 times more than it does in the Philippines. And so I'm going to do that. Sure. I would say as a business owner, you do have those liberties to do something to that extent. However, I think you have to recognize what kind of quality training and experience is now rolled into that. And at the same time, I would 
debate that if you are living in North Carolina and want Colorado North Dakota wages, North Dakota, they're all the same. Get over your differences, Norths and Souths. Carolinas and Dakotas. Yeah, West Virginia, Virginia, get over it, all right? But if you're wanting to live there and you want a fully remote job, then you have to understand that the employer also has the ability, right, to go fully remote, but they're looking for something more in that experience or what have you. And so they are willing to pay a premium to you for what a effectively virtual assistant would cost them. So I would say it's still local. You're taking a hit on that side, but at the same time, I don't think you should be taking an unfair hit, right? If it's, I'm gonna do minimum wage and it's a job that is generally a tech developer that will get $10,000 if they were self-employed for that same job, I wouldn't say take a huge hit just because that you're going from one state to another based on where the company is located, where they do business where, versus where you are. I think you have to find that right balance for you and understand the value you bring to the table and understand what your value is worth and understand the amount of money that you are comfortable making in order to live the lifestyle that you want. And that's my long-winded answer to, I would pay for what the person is fair versus what the going rate is within that city because you can point to any city you can chicago downtown chicago someone on in podunk illinois is their cost of living is lower so do they get illinois wages or chicago wages they get... i think what makes it that much more complex is do you pay more for the for an the 1099 independent contractor is ultimately what you are um, yeah working in north dakota versus do you pay more for that person versus the person that's not as good but lives in utah higher cost of living in utah not as good of a worker in terms of what you're getting on the back end uh, just created a little bit more complex of a situation i think for business owners to validate how much i'm going to pay somebody because i guess where i'm going with it is it simply it can't simply be where you choose to live it's also productivity right yeah yep. so again it's gray area versus a black and white issue to say, you live in North Dakota, yeah. oh, that's 30 grand, Utah, <laughs> 40 grand, and here, yeah. it's 60 grand. Yeah, yeah, starting, yeah. And, but I think you, yeah, back to your productivity and what job you want them to do. Is this a very highly complex job that paying premium for them, even if they don't work in your state, regardless of all of that, paying premium for them to get that premium result is that- Irrelevant to what state you live in. Yeah. I'd say it's irrelevant of what state you live in. Yeah. And I think you as the employer, which I think is where this great resignation ultimately stems from, you as an employer or an employee understanding your value and what you bring to a company and demanding to be compensated for that has been the biggest cultural wake up of the last 10 years where people are saying, I'm actually worth this much and I see my company has continually profited but I'm not seeing an equal, like, you know, I, I see our, our company profits went up 10% this last year, but I didn't see my income go up even 1% or 2% to even stay with inflation. So 8%, I'm going 9%. to just go search. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, I'm going to go search for somewhere else. And the amount of stories on a subreddit, like a uh, anti-work where there's someone that started brand new that was making more than someone or making the same amount as someone that was in that company for 10 years. But again, and then, what if me but, brand new has fresh ideas and I'm able to pump things out and that 10 year vet is just like, they're lazy. Yeah. They just chuck might be the case. It. Yeah, might be the case, but right. say they do the same job and the same productivity. You would expect that someone that's been with that company, there'd be some loyalty one way or the other in the sense of we're going to keep the workers that we know are good happy versus rolling the dice on every single employee that comes strolling through the yeah, door. But I have a problem with entitlement. The longer I'm with Jalen, I know I'm guaranteed to get a higher wage. If I'm there with yeah. 15 years, because I think it opens the door for complacency. When I know it's gonna be guaranteed that I'm gonna get that 5% bump each year I'm with you longer, it's like, yeah. where's the incentive to work harder? When yep. I know that's gonna come regardless. And yeah, that's a fair, and I think that's a fair criticism because there are bad people at every job. There's people that just suck at their job, but I don't think that a small amount of the workforce that would do that should now set a tone for how you treat all of your employees, including the most loyal ones that come up with ideas and want to help the company grow.
I think being like, I don't know, we're just not growing as much as we would want you want to. And you're not specifically helping the company grow as much as we think you should. If you're a car manufacturer and you drill the doors onto the Tesla and watch it go away and you do that every time and you do it for 10 years, you should have a pay increase, especially if Ford is offering you a same hours, maybe even better hours because you have seniority now and more pay per hour and a signing bonus. And now Tesla's, I can't understand the entitlement of that worker. <laughs> it's like, no, well, for, right, you should have, you should have offered. <laughs> yeah, four companies are just in a different spot financially. The big boy Ford might be able to say, we can afford, pun intended, yeah. to be able to do that and make that decision. Yeah. And other companies are just like, our hands are tied. We can't offer you the same because we don't have the same dollars yeah. coming through. I don't think now. that. I don't think that the company that can't afford it is a victim or that the other, that the employee that is wanting that from the company is now unreasonably demanding or has, le I want like the, I just thought of this. The perfect analogy is an athlete. If you have an athlete, Aaron Judge, Yankees center fielder, right fielder, for those of you who don't know, hopefully going to be the MVP. Anyways, I digress. He did not sign a contract extension with the New York Yankees because he didn't feel their deal that was offered to him was fair. And so it looks like he's going to go on the open market at the end of the season. Now, is are the Yankees a victim of Judge's greed? Or should they have just offered him more money to better represent the value that he believed he brought and that they didn't believe that he brought? But now he's having an MVP run season. And it's, you know what? We probably should have offered him more. We just they can't. We, there's not, there's we, no we were hoping for, can. correct, but I think it comes down to, there's another thing that are talked in sports a lot of a hometown discount. You were with that sports team for a long time. They drafted you, whatever. You should be willing to take less of a contract to stay comfortable. And I think that is what a lot of people have been doing. They've been taking less, but they've realized that them taking that hometown discount year after year, while the surrounding market that they find themselves in has continued to increase what a standard pay is year after year after year and has now eclipsed significantly what that discount that they've been giving as loyalty to that company. They're now going, well, wait, I'm willing to make a dollar less an hour than what I was offered over there, but I'm not willing to take $5 or $10 less per hour. I'm going to ask my employer for that. And when the employer goes, no, we can't do that. We don't give $5 an hour raises. Then they do leave because the other company is offering a $5 rate pay increase what they're currently making, Sure, but just starting out or whatever that may be. So right. I think that's where it ultimately plays into and all coming back to working remotely. I think that working remotely or not is definitely an area that you can entice employees. Nick, what are some final thoughts that you want to grace us with? I think, I think we went down a rabbit hole. That was fun, but yeah. Rick reel us back <laughs> in into remote work. I think it'll be an interesting one and a re very much a reality as we move forward in terms of allowing people to have remote work because societal norms. And I think to a large extent, we are, we can be and have proven to be very productive through COVID. We've proven to be very productive even while we're working remotely which has brought this whole thing into the limelight to say, do we really need those corporate structures that cost for some companies thousands <laughs> and hundreds of thousands of dollars in rental space? Yeah. I think it does definitely, if nothing else, it presents companies and large companies of that to answer that question that was always just expected. It was expected that you know, they don't have to be here, but we want them to be here. And I think that's a healthy thing because Again, once you're exposed to new information and what potentially can be better information, it makes more sense in 2022. Maybe it didn't make sense in 2012. Maybe it didn't make sense in 2002, but in 2022, it now makes sense. So I think that's the other reality that we have to come to terms with. And again, it's not an all encompassing one. I think what works for Tesla is different than what can work with Airbnb because how many hotels yep. does Airbnb have employees at? zero <laughs> they don't own any real estate and i think yeah. that's one of the uh, they're again redefining uber how many cars does uber own zero they're a company that has zero inventory and is the largest taxi system in the world airbnb is the largest hub when it comes to facilitating places to sleep and they don't own any hotel chains like those are just realities that we deal with today that we didn't deal with 10 20 years ago so it helps yeah. redefine what normal is and I think normal for one company like Airbnb has to be different than a car company. And that's 
that's my final thoughts on this subject. Yeah, I like what you said there with in relations to it is based on per company model. That's definitely anyone that says no, this should just be fully. Everyone should just be working from home. It'll cut down emissions, greenhouse gases, win, 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 win. <laughs> it's like how the, so when you go to McDonald's, how do you want that experience to be? Is it just a screen and then buttons? And like, at least they didn't, don't forget to not add the cheese on my double quarter pounder. Like I'm so much happier with robots. Maybe that's your view. Maybe it's not. Let us know though, what your view is down in the comments section below or if you are currently listening to this, when you get to a safe place, go check out the website for this particular blog post and leave some comments down there. We want to hear from you. Let us know what you heard of this episode. And if you have any topics that you would like us to discuss on future episodes, be sure to let us know as well. That's it for this week's episode of Business Bookend, a part of the Beyond Real Estate podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Want to see, hear, or listen to more of Nick's take on the California real estate market? Check out my links below. Also, check out the links below for more information on products, books, or references made in this podcast. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.